And so that brings us to our star attraction, which is reviewing the code. And when it comes to reviewing code, our goal is really pretty simple, which is that we want to help developers review as little code as possible. <laughs> now, how much can Git Clear reduce the lines of code that need to be reviewed compared to a traditional Git provider? You can see in the case of the most recent pull request that I submitted, the Git Clear representation actually removes 41% of the overall lines that need to be reviewed. That's a pretty big number. And you can see in particular, there's a couple files that really do the heavy lifting in allowing us to present this more concise diff view. And so we'll look at these and try to give you a visceral understanding of how it is that Git Clear is able to present a complete and thorough, but more concise representation of what changed. The first obvious difference between the diffs is the unified diff that GitHub chooses versus the split view that Git Clear chooses. On Git Clear, we offer the same split or unified diff presentation that every diff tool offers, including GitHub, but we also offer a dynamic option as a default that presents files as split or unified based on what changed within each file. So if there are sufficient changes on both sides of the file, a split view is used, otherwise unified view is used. But you can see that Git Clear was able to combine a handful of the before and after changes in this file as find and replace. That is the indigo lines that you see here. But in general, these files are pretty similar, except that the GitHub version is just a bit more vertical scrolling to endure. There's another subtle difference between these two. If you hover on the operation icon, we'll look up an explanation for what precipitated the change. One example is line 158 here. Why did the author remove the possibility of opening a color selection menu for text? Well, if you hover on the operation, you get the explanation from the commit message in which the change occurred. It's useful to be able to get that extra information just from hovering on the line that you're curious about. So let's move on to the next file, the color selection menu. And this is a little bit more interesting. This file renamed the cell color selection menu to just be color selection menu. And the file starts with Git Clear combining a delete and an add into a single update line. But then things get pretty weird. Whereas Git Clear shows the diff of the render custom color option function as just a couple lines, GitHub shows an entire function being added. What the heck is going on here? Well, well, finding the answer will require putting your scrolling finger to work. If we proceed down the GitHub version and down some more and keep going down, you'll eventually find an almost identical version of the function that is shown as an addition at the top of the file. And so what really happened here was that this block of code in the course of getting moved from the cell color selection menu to the color selection menu was moved up into its own function. And so the only lines that actually changed were the name of the method and its parameters so that all you have to think about in the Git Clear version is the function definition that changed. By scrolling through this whole block of added code and its corresponding block of deleted code below, you can start to get a visceral sense for how Git Clear cut so many lines that needed review. So now let's look at the other biggest difference between uh, traditional Git providers diff and Git Clear, and that was in the file that became known as Cycle Color Theme. This is a pretty interesting example versus GitHub because you can see that Git Clear recognizes this change as a rename from Table Cell Theme SCSS versus its current identity as Cycle Color Theme, whereas GitHub is calling this a newly added file, and even though it was only a relatively small portion of that file that changed in the course of the rename. So in the GitHub version of this, there's a corresponding file that shows all of these lines being deleted. But in Git Clear, since we know that the change was actually just renaming a file, we don't have to show what is effectively a bunch of unchanged lines that started in one file and ended up in another. That's what these lines you're seeing here are, the lines that actually did get added. Uh, whereas in GitHub, it's indistinguishable where the cutoff is between the lines that had previously existed and the lines that were newly added in this pull request. Moving 
down the file. The other pretty intriguing difference in how these are represented is that there was actually a systematic update that was made to the definition of the text colors. That's why Git Clear is showing all of these lines as updates. Now we have a diff viewer setting that allows the user to configure whether or not they want to see the before content of an updated line within the diff itself or whether they want to hover over the operation icon, in which case you can see the entirety of the original version of this line at the beginning of the pull request. So that is the essence of how Git Clear was able to take what in this case looks like 142 lines and distills it down to a much smaller set of updates. So there's one more feature I want to show off before we conclude this video, and we call it incremental diffs. It's a feature for reviewers that return to a pull request after leaving feedback to see how the changes that they suggested were actually implemented. Now, many Git tools, including GitHub, remember which files a pull request reviewer has seen, and so if you revisit the pull request, those files are automatically collapsed, which saves a lot of time. However, if the pull request author makes a change to the file in response to feedback that has been left, what the reviewer will next see when they visit the pull request is the entire set of changes that happened in the file. And so if a hundred lines originally changed and you left a comment on one of those lines, which the author made a change in response to, you are going to see all 100 lines of those changes again. That's obviously not ideal because 99 of those changes you've already reviewed and you don't need to spend your time looking at those. That's why Git Clear offers incremental diffs. The incremental part of this is that when you return to a pull request, you'll often see a label like this that indicates what you're reviewing is not the entire set of changes that were made to a file, but only the changes that were made in commits since you previously reviewed the file. For the way that our team works, this might be the single feature that saves the most time out of all the features that I've shown today, because if your team goes through multiple rounds of review on a pull request, you've certainly felt the pain of trying to look at a file you've already seen before and pick out which of the changes that were in response to my feedback and which of these changes were already here and I've already looked at before. Thank you.